You know, this month at Walk Through the Bible, we're having the Psalms Challenge. Maybe you've seen it in on Facebook. Maybe you've seen it on Instagram. We're challenging folks to read through all 150 Psalms during the month of June. And there's several different approaches to that that you can find on our website. There's a link right below this particular video. But you know, it, you don't have to go far in Psalms to come to something really great and worth thinking about. Psalm 1 simply starts out and says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Like many things in the wisdom literature, Psalms, Proverbs, this really presents a contrast that, that we're at a fork in the road. And the question is really, who do we allow to influence us? We ought to, as followers of Jesus, we ought to have friends who are both Christ followers and those who haven't met him as Savior yet, because otherwise, how else are we going to bring other people into relationship with him. But the question always comes down to, am I influencing them or are they shaping me? In this particular passage, it talks about don't, um, don't walk in the counsel of the wicked, stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of scoffers. What does that really mean? Most people I know don't walk around with a name tag saying, I'm Sam the scoffer, you know, I, I, I'm Sidney the sinner. You know, they, they don't identify like that. It really is, is revealed by the advice that they give. And there's a couple areas more than any others where I think this is real clearly seen. One is those who advise us with our money or our, our business decisions. Um, you know, that's why I think it's so important to have trusted people around us who can advise us financially. Um, let's say that you're struggling with debt and you know, if, if you've got friends who are saying, ah, you deserve it, just just spend it. You know, YOLO, you only live once, just just spend it. You, you might not live. Now, what are you saving for the future for? There'll come a time when you'll wish you hadn't listened to friends like that. And let's say you come into some unexpected money, whether that's an inheritance or a stimulus payment uh, or, or however it comes to you. You know, to have a trusted advisor who says, you know, I've heard you talk. I've heard you talk about that children's home that's real important to you. I've, I've heard you talk about this ministry that had an impact on you personally. You know, this is kind of a windfall you've experienced here. It's not something you were expecting. Do you think you might want to give a portion of that to, to that ministry now? To have an advisor like that who shares your faith and values and your commitment to generosity is such a cool thing. The other big area where we see this is, is when we need help with a relationship. You know, when we hit a tough spot in our marriage and it's easy to vent at work with friends. And if those friends go, yep, that just confirms, I've told you this before, all men are jerks, 100%. They're, they're all jerks. You're better off without them. I'm glad that I got paroled and released for bad behavior. I'm out of that relationship and you should do the same thing. Think twice before you just take that as truth. You know, it's wonderful when a friend says, you know what, we all hit tough spots in our marriage. We've sure had them. And, um, you know, I don't know your situation. I don't know the details of it, but I've discovered that a lot of times it just starts with a commitment to work through the problem together. And I, I know some folks who could help you. You shouldn't feel shame in asking for help. I got a good counselor that I could connect you with, or, or let me tell you some ways that we've struggled. And to have a friend who actually loves you enough to go, you know what, I was there when you and your husband, you and your wife exchanged your vows. You made promises, not just to each other, but to God. And I just wanna, I just wanna slow you down long enough to make sure that you're really doing all you can to save that relationship before you make a life-altering decisions. That's what the scripture is talking about, that kind of a friend. It goes on and says, um, this person who his delight is in the law of the Lord, he wants to do what God says. She wants to do what the Bible teaches. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. 
By contrast, the wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. It's not at the moment of decision that we see the consequences. That takes months, sometimes years to unfold. But here the writer of Psalm 1 is saying, let me tell you where these two different forks lead. That'll cause you to think about it. And then it even gives us a broader view in verses 5 and 6. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So as we start into this Psalm challenge, we're just a couple days into the month. If you haven't started yet, you haven't, you're not behind hardly at all. Jump in with us and read through this. But let Psalm 1 just put that in your mind kind of as, as just the, the main north star that's going to guide you through this. Because you're going to see all through the Psalms, God gives us a choice. And because he loves us, he doesn't just offer us the choice and give us freedom. He also clarifies the consequences of either of those two directions we choose. So we'll see you the rest of the way through the book of Psalms as we do this together. But start off right here in Psalm 1, and we're going to have a great month learning about this together. God bless you.